So, so with that, uh, I think we have enough time to finish this question. So this is a uh, uh, application of the Compton scattering formula. Uh, Compton scattering formula. It uh, again, it it takes a lot of effort to derive the formula, and um, but once it's derived, it's quite useful. Uh, for uh, quite useful because one, it's quite general, the version that you derived in the textbook, it handles all these different angles. And two, it takes into account the special relativity, which means uh, there are no corrections you need depending on the energy of the photon. It's a valid at low limit of the photon energy and it's valid at high limits of the photon energy. So uh, I think from writing, down it, writing it down earlier, I, memorized enough of it. Let me just try to write it down. And if I, <laughs> I think this is the formula, lambda plus minus lambda, which you could call change in the wavelength is equal to, I think H over MC. This by the way, is sometimes called a uh, Compton wavelength. Um, you can always talk about Compton wavelength of any, um, any massive particle because it only depends on the fundamental constant and the mass of the particle you're talking about. And one minus uh, cosine of the scattering angle. Remember how theta was defined as the, the difference between the propagation direction of the incoming photon and the propagation direction of the scattered photon. So it, the closer this is to zero, the more kind of a grazing uh, collision it is. And at, at 180 degrees is where it's a head-on collision and the photon just goes straight back the way it came. So, okay. Um, I think the way the question is worded, I want to do a slight bit of a rewriting because in this question, they are actually telling me the wavelength of incoming photon. They're telling me that here and it's asking me for the wavelength of the scattered photon. So let me rewrite this so that it's solved for the wavelength of the scattered photon. So the scattered photon wavelength is equal to, um, move lambda over, so incident wavelength plus, and this will now give me the difference, H over MC, one minus cosine, Data. Oh, I get a feeling this is going to be super easy to just to do on all from alpha. So let me do it that way. <laughs> no reason to do more work than I have to. Okay. Um, so, oh, oh, uh, <laughs> let's see. Do I want to? Uh, I think I'll just uh, type it out. So the, the instant wavelength is 13.5. And I think if I say PM, Wolfram Alpha will understand that to be picometer plus uh, Planck's constant if H over. And, uh, and the question tells you that when high energy photons scatter from matter, they are effectively scattering from the electrons in the matter. So even though it's talking about block of carbon, not gonna use mass of the carbon atom. I'm gonna use mass of the electron. That's uh, electron mass is the one that matters for this scattering times speed of light um, times one minus cosine of uh, 30 degrees. Okay, and I need to check input interpretation uh, as I scroll through and yeah, it's not ours, it's Planck's constant. So let's see, yeah, 13.5 picometers plus H over MEC, yeah. Oh, oh I see why it's saying uh, numerical answer correct within 0 0.01 picometer. Because, you know, if we are just doing within 1% deal, then um, I guess 13.5 isn't quite right, but this is a very small difference, only 0.33 difference. So if we want good precision on the difference, then you want to enter um, down to the hundredth digit. So 13.83 is um, the wavelength of the scattered photon. Let me just submit to be sure. Yeah, keep going. So at 90 degrees, okay. Like <laughs> there's a reason I entered it this way. This is so that I can just change the angle here. 
No. There's also another syntax that's sometimes useful, which is a substitution or replacement syntax that's part of Wolfram language, but we are not using Mathematica this semester, so I won't. Uh, oh, I have to do this every single time. Um, so, so I won't teach you Wolfram language syntax. Um, okay, 13.5. Okay, now the difference is getting to be larger. Uh, it, uh, at 90 degree scattering, the photon is transferring more energy. Um, so, well, 15.93. And this is, I guess, where the precision would have been decent even if it wasn't correct within hundredth picometer, but it's fine. Uh, what is the wavelength of the photon scatter that, so this is the, when the photon loses the most possible energy. So, oh, like, eh, I'll just put in 180 for consistency and I'll have to watch out for H getting interpreted as hours, Planck's constant. And Wolfram well, Alpha is smart, but it's, uh, I guess, somehow not smart enough to know that. Um, because when it's interpreted as hours, the units don't match. So if Wolfram uh, Alpha were smart enough, it would know from context that this has to be Planck's constant for the units to work out. But um, okay, 18.35. But um, Wolfram Alpha fundamentally was written by a mathematician, not a physicist. And I think the biggest difference between a mathematician and a physicist is physicists care about units a lot. And um, mathematicians often will ignore units. Um, and, and so, yeah, <laughs> it's just difference between the disciplines. So, you know, if you think of some of the uh, example questions you get from your math class, sometimes, you you know, you'll get equations where they quite clearly ignored what unit X is in and um, a proper physicist would never give you questions like that or they shouldn't give you questions like that because it builds bad habit of people ignoring units. Um, 